RV life bites without internet. We nearly packed up and left the campground because we had no cell, no internet. And we have a solution. We can't wait to share it with you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it is challenging to live amazing if you're out here full-time RVing without cell or internet. Impossible. Uh, we went through that. <laughs> It was not fun. Now, if you're just going away for a weekend, you may be fine unplugged, but if you're thinking about full-time RV living, it's really important to be connected. Uh, if you're solo especially, I remember how important that was for me to be able to have a connection to the outside world. It's very important to both of us, and, and I still get most of my news, and in fact, pretty much all of my news, and 99% of my entertainment from the internet. Well, let's talk about that time where we didn't. <laughs> so Paul and I went to a campground in Oregon that was notorious for poor service. And Paul's like, well, it's only a couple days. We don't have any internet or cell, but, but I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay <laughs> for a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, so exactly two hours later, he comes to me and he says, I think that campsite over there might have a little better. I think I can get a bar of service over there. Actually, what happened is we had gone up to do laundry and, and I was talking to a fellow camper and they said there was a, a cluster of sites not far from where we were parked that, that were the only sites on in the park that had internet. So I went over there with my phone and checked it out. And sure enough, it, it I got up to two bars. <laughs> so we were in our first campsite for two hours. We were all unloaded and ready and set up for camp. And Paul says, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was also an issue with, with the, the power pedestal. It was giving us a red light on our search device and I, I was not comfortable with that. So That's just an excuse. The real reason was <laughs> He was losing it. He needed to have his internet and he was losing it. I, yeah, I am dependent on my internet, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we packed up camp and we moved to a different campsite just to have internet. We actually had a cellular booster at that time, but it broke during travel. And what this video is about is how to have internet all the time, or pretty much most of the time, internet and cell service, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for the last, I'd say, year and a half, two years, I used a cellular booster called WeBoost. And we've actually found something that works better. But all cellular boosters work with all the cellular companies, much, all yeah. the big ones, as well as the little ones, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, as well mm -hmm. as Cricket, and some of the ones you've probably never heard of. And they boost that cell signal, give you cell service so that you can then connect to the internet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it boosts it, whatever, it looks for the nearest tower and, and pulls that signal in and amplifies it and sends it out of an antenna that you have inside the rig. We were just in Monument Valley in Utah. When we got there, we checked how many bars we had and we had zero. And Monument Valley is beautiful, but it is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we turned on our booster and we got up to two. I was in the Smoky Mountains National Park, of course, with no cell service. I lost cell service 10 miles before going to the campground in Smoky Mountains National Park. Turned on my booster and I went from zero to one bar. Now one bar allowed me to text, but that was enough so I could text my family and let them know that I was safe. So we have the high boost system now. We had WeBoost before. Um, Liz had it when, when I uh, met her and moved in. Right, and we had it together for six months. And when we got the high boost, we saw a big difference. Yeah, I noticed immediately that it was uh, doing a better job. We don't have the equipment to measure signal strength, but I can just tell you from the time that we've had WeBoost and, the t and now that the high boost is better. It really is the indoor antenna with the WeBoost. We have to actually put, and I bought two WeBoosts over that time. And I actually had to put the phone directly touching the indoor antenna on the WeBoost. It was kind of a pain in the butt because then I had to be right where the antenna was. On the high boost, the indoor antenna is fabulous. You know, we can be like 10 to 15 feet away from it. Where I sit most of the time in, in the rig is a recliner. The high boost antenna is, I don't know, maybe 10 feet 
little more than 10 feet away that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it works fine. If you're thinking about full-time RVing, you must get one of these if internet or cell connectivity is important to you. And we have actually partnered with Highboost so we can give you 10% off of a Highboost system. So what you would want if you're traveling is the Travel 4G 2.0 is the one that we currently are using. And it consists of an outside antenna that is pulling in the signal and an inside antenna. And a booster. The, the outside antenna goes to the, the booster, the booster goes to the inside antenna. There are three components. And how easy of an install is the high boost? It's pretty easy. The cable routing, it, you know, it depends on your rig. We came down a, uh, a race that's in from the roof into the pass through. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, a couple hours after I uh, had to recock everything and uh, to seal it up after I got it in. Yeah, it really depends on the access. So my first cellular booster, I actually had a handyman install it. They had to drill a hole in the roof of my van. Uh, my second one, there was a porthole through the tail light of my 260RD camper. And in this one, we have sort of a similar situation. So it's, it's a race that goes from What's the, a race? A race is something that the cable, that any chase. water, a like, chase, yeah. A chase uh, and a race, the uh, same thing? Yeah, maybe it's a chase, yeah. <laughs> I call it a race, but yeah, you're right. It's it's a chase. Like a laundry chute, only teeny tiny, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you want to mount your antenna on the highest place on the roof of your camper. Now, if you camp in wooded campgrounds, we recommend that you install your high boost antenna in the front, not the back of your rig. This is because if you're in a back end site, you'll most likely have more open skies towards the front of your camper. Do we have it wired in is what I'm asking. So do you, can you boondock and use it? Yeah, we're, it runs off of 12 volts. And what's cool about the high boost cellular booster is it's omnidirectional antenna. If you happen to have a camper van or, you know, a, a class B or a class C, you can actually use it while you're driving down the road. If you're mm -hmm. on the phone and need service, I know this from having had that when I was in the van, you know, and that's a nice thing. So again, we have partnered with Highboost and we can give you 10% off by using the promo code Liz10. And if you have the Highboost, let us know in the comment section about what you think of it and how it's working for you. We'd love to get some feedback on that. And we have a newsletter. You may not know this. If you go to our website, which is lizamazing.com, sign up for the newsletter. It won't bombard you, but probably every month or two, we will share with you some deals that we have, some savings for RV products, and just kind of give you a little bit of insider information too. Yeah, and we'll see you in the next video.